We're here today with Sean Gregory, Managing Director of Barrow Resources. Sean, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Good to see you, David. Firstly, for those who don't know the Barrow story, can you give us a quick overview? Yeah, look, Barrow has always maintained a dual commodity focus. We've got some wonderful gold assets around Kulgadi, and we've also got a cobalt nickel project just near Norseman, and both projects located in the wonderful mining state of Western Australia. 2019 was a busy year across both commodities. What were some of the highlights? Yeah, look, let's start with the gold, David. It certainly was a big year through 2019. And look, those gold assets have really served the company well over many, many years, right back since we listed in 2000. Been in and out of production three times during that period. And uh, the focus the last few years has been building up the ounces. We're up to 145,000 ounces. And one of the key achievements from last year was actually delivering a scoping study that showed that we can economically mine some of those ounces. Uh, so we're really excited about that and, uh, and we'll keep chasing that one down. Turning to the cobalt, a lot mm. of time was spent on a PFS that mm. has just been announced. Mm. What are some of the highlights? Look, we're really proud of this. To deliver a pre-feasibility study, we've done it counter-cyclical to the market. Uh, cobalt prices are down. But we're exceptionally proud of the work that our team's done. It's an absolute first-rate piece of work. Uh, it gives us a maiden ore reserve, which is uh, a real feather in our cap. And that really gives us now a, a cobalt project in a stable mining jurisdiction with a, with a guaranteed, sustainable source of cobalt. And uh, we think that that's going to be pretty well received by end users. How important is it to be ready when the cycle turns? Look, that's been our strategy. We have invested against the cycle. Cobalt prices are currently at historical lows in real terms over the last, uh, even looking over a 100 year time period. Now cobalt goes up and down and we're down and the up's just around the corner. And it's not just the normal ups and downs. Of course, there's the potential reset that we see coming with electric vehicles, um, which is not so much a, a matter of if or when. Uh, that's happening, that's coming. It's just a matter of how fast that uh, is adopted. So we're ready. It's no good doing a study when prices are high. Uh, we're now ready, uh, ready to go. And uh, investors really should now look at that cobalt project as a bit of a call option on spot cobalt price. Investors usually get cautious on the release of a PFS because they believe it's mm. the start of another significant spending mm. period. Mm. Clearly not the case here. No, that's, that's a key part of our strategy. And it's been our strategy right along. Um, we've done our part in the process, we've uh, delivered the pre-feasibility study, delivered the oil reserve, but we don't have our heads in the clouds, we're very realistic. I'm not going to be the guy turning on the key uh, to the operation, but rather we've now got it ready for some very serious firms uh, to have a close, close look at it. So looking at potential joint venture partners or potential builders of this project, mm. what does the PFS mean from a discussion point of view? Yeah, look, we've been talking to a lot of very serious firms for a long time, and uh, they've all told us that a pre-feasibility study is their minimum investment criteria. So that's what we've, we've delivered. Um, and these firms have really got long-term investment horizons. Uh, they're looking to secure their, their supply, and we've deliberately targeted the product strategy to make an intermediate product. We've left a little bit of value on the table, and there'll be a great opportunities for those firms to make money downstream in making the metals and making the various componentry for, for the battery industry. Uh, so that's really the story. So the key message is guaranteed sustainable supply in Western Australia, well advanced. Looking at 2020 from a gold perspective, mm. what's the activity program look like there? Yeah, look, that's where our focus goes to from an operational perspective. Uh, we'll keep drilling out those gold assets, keep building that story with Burbanks. Uh, indeed, post scoping study, which we finished in about October last year, uh, we had some very good uh, gold results come out that further augment that opportunity. And we'll augment that further with more drilling campaigns through 2020. But we'll also track down the potential for near-term um, gold production. You know, with gold now at record, record levels in Aussie dollar terms, uh, the scoping study showed that uh, there's good money to be made uh, with mining at Burbanks. And we really see that as an opportunity to make some cash, to then pour further into the ground, to really try and build up the true potential of Burbanks. Um, and, uh, and that'll be the focus for 2020. And the project is infrastructure endowed. Well, absolutely. So being right there in Coolgardie, we're only nine kilometres from town. 
um, and from uh, building the uh, construction, uh, the capex is zero on the Burbank's opportunity. Uh, it'll be a toll milling operation. There's uh, Burbank's mill right next door, owned by a third party. A major shareholder also owns a mill in Coolgardie. So there's plenty of options there. Um, and as far as infrastructure on site is required, it'd be as simple as uh, dropping a donger on the ground. A little bit of working capital required to establish the decline, um, but um, it's about as simple as you get from a um, capital development point of view. A strong dual commodity strategy and a clear path forward in 2020. Exciting times ahead for Barrow Resources. Sean, thanks for your time. My pleasure, David. Thank you.